Yes, welcome to my loyal viewers and subscribers to the Jamaica Young Police Channel. I can tell you that this blew my mind. The story that I'm about to share with you, my loyal viewers and subscribers. I did not know that the corruption in Jamaica was this rife. Within the police force, <laughs> that it, it goes all the way up. And you, you know, you're going to be surprised to understand how a detective leaked information to the late Walde. And then, you know, Richard Ramdial, that's how he got dirted. Remember what I have told you, my loyal subscribers and viewers. No criminal organization can't survive and become successful without the help of the police force and its members and it is the same for every corrupt government official at the jamaica young police channel we are going to give you raw and varnish and diluted and harsh facts about the reason the late walde killed richard ramdial that's his son then we will delve into the killing of the father ramdial and why it is all started by one narcotics detective who was on the payroll. I should say, well, I look, I should say that they are just friends with benefits. They understand because he knows that Waldi is a big juggies and he gets his cut and you know the likes how to operate to the detective, you know, big man, getting his money from Waldi and other up officers, you are all the way up to our deputy commissioner of police right now, up by the commissioner office, getting their money, turn a blind eye, and while they was able to do all these things. And it all started by one detective passing passed on information to Walde about a drug raid and bus. From there, all hell break close. But what Waldi did not know is that Father Ramdial and the late Edward Siaga and the likes are best friends. And he committed the ultimate sin when he sent three men from Cockburn Pen, from Gully, to kill the elder statesmen. And at this channel, we're going to break it down by a series of events how it all started and what happened and why the Ramdial was killed why the son um, Richard Ramdial was killed because you have to understand you know, in life you know, there is no honest criminal you, know. you understand no honest criminal and the reason why Richard Ramdial was killed is because Richard Ramdial um, well not a criminal um, he was associating himself with people who were involved in nefarious things while they and he's from uptown he's from uptown and then he mixed up with this um this guy who's from the ghetto um who's involved in the drug trail plus he's a done and poor richard didn't know that this man that when you come on to people and they're cocking, you don't, you don't, you don't take not even, you don't take not even a black car, what should I, you don't take a ounce of their cocaine because people who sell cocaine, you know, they're just like people who sell or deal in cocaine, they're just, um, in, in, in the diet coke, they're just like the people who are involved in, you know, ingesting the same. So you don't play people that deal with diet coke. You don't play with them because these people you, 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 you take a ounce of everything they're going to kill you. So what happened was that you know um, Richard and Walde they were in on Michael Abrams, not the reporter. You understand, but a man who lives in Caribbean Estate at the time. So Michael Abrams. A 36-year-old resident of Caribbean Estate in Portmore, St. Catherine, 
on Friday, July 7th, officers were conducting a special anti-narcotics operation between the hours of 4 p.m. and 11 p.m. in Caribbean Estate when a search yielded three large bags and one suitcase with 70 rectangular parcels containing cocaine, diet coke weighing 77.5 kilograms and value at 307 307,000 US dollars or 93 million Jamaican dollars. Approximately US 1,440,000 in cash were also seized. So, based on what happened with this raid, um, the, <laughs> the narcotics police receive information from a certain telephone number which led them to the house. Michael Abrams, who was a part of it, you know, a part of the, the clique, you know, because he was getting some amount of money to hide the stuff there, the diet coke. And when the police arrested him and they found all this stuff, everything lead right back to it was Richard Ramdial. So the thing is that now they did not, they did not leave, did not left the right amount of diet cokes that they were in the bag. So Richard took two of the bags instead of um, leaving four and and kept it for himself. Then he called narcotics. That is what is being said within the circle of Walde, Walde people in Capburn Pen who are close to him and some live uptown now and uh, the Ramdial. So that's how it all started. So Abrams was later charged following an interview in the presence of his attorney for possession of cocaine, dealing in cocaine, using his premises for the storage of cocaine, conspiracy. Yes, before we continue the journey, let me ask you a question. Have you subscribed to the channel as yet? Yes, man, if you haven't subscribed, subscribed to the channel as yet, this is yet the opportunity to subscribe. Subscribe to the channel, you know, sure that you appreciate that, you know, this channel has been delivering to you, the audience members and new viewers. Click on all so that whenever we at the Jamaica Young Police channel release a video, you'll be the first one to get the notification. Hit the notification bell, the all. Click the like button and most of all comment below. And we'll respond to most, if not all, comments. However, there are, there are a set of men babies on the channel. And look here, this is not a kindergarten or no massage pal. We're not, we're not here to massage people eager. You know? We're just here to give you the undilated truth. So if you can't, if you can't, if, if you're a person who is not a sponsor for the truth, you're the wrong channel, all right? Because we're not going to over here for telling the lies for you or your political party. None of them. All you're getting from the Jamaica Young Police Channel is the truth. You understand? So, all of you men babies, yeah, just go and get your ego check. And if you cannot manage the truth, don't come over here. Because we're not over here to massage anybody ego and babysit anybody. This is not a kindergarten stuff. This is real. This is life and death with people's life. So we have to, you know, we have to be accurate, and we're not going to pretty up anything for anyone. And those who are talking about we're going backwards, yes. So we don't want to make the same mistake again. So that's why we're going backwards and and delve into the undiluted truth and tell the people. So that's why we we in even with this case with Walde. That's why we're telling you. I know Walde, know him very well. Know him before he went to, you know, before he went to England. I know that it was Dakri who, you know, took him up. Most people don't even know Dakri, and you know Dakri, you understand. Um, Dakri is a deportee. So, so we continue the journey, all right? You see, and possession in criminal property. Abraham's plea guilty 
to the offenses of possession of cocaine and dealing in cocaine in Diet Coke. So, you know, he pleaded guilty. Remember, you know, that this drugs, it have over 93 million Jamaican dollars and he pleaded guilty to um, breaches of the Dangerous Drug Act. And he was sentenced in December 20, 20, 2017. That's December 22nd, 2017. Abrams was fined $500,000 $500, $500, or six months in prison for dealing in cocaine. Nine months hard labor suspended for two years when he appeared before the St. Catherine Parish Court. So if you look into this in a large context, you can see the corruption within the court system itself. Not blaming the judge, but you know it goes right back to the politicians. They are the ones who are the lawmakers. And guess what? Who are friends with Waldi? Who Waldi was rubbing shoulder with? He wasn't rubbing shoulder with a little ordinary guy. Well, there was not an ordinary guy, he was a big guy in the thing, you know. Well, they have connection all the way up to the top. So, this court case, you know, it was, everything was tightly, tightly. And it was the CCU who released the information. So, it wasn't something that even the regular um, news, uh, news media reported about the this disposition of this matter. And it says that um, later on, you know, Mr. Abraham is supposed to face another court in the Home Circuit Court in regards to um, proceeds of Crime Act. You know, the, that um, Dr. Peter Phillips champion, where he said, prove or lose. If you can't prove or you come by it, you lose it. Some people say, you know, it's a bad mind act because if, you know, matter how a man work and get him things, you know, supposed to have proof he lose nothing because, you know, what you understand, no harm, no fall. But Dr. Peter Phillips said, no, who want to see you make your money on them things? You can't just come with a whole heap of money and like, like you know, like, the, like, like others who make money and no accountability, different era. So that's all. Everything starts to crumble from there with this case. So coming up, we'll tell you how and what led up to, you know, while the sending is going to dirt Richard Ramdial. And we'll tell you the players who are involved in that, involving the dirting of Richard Ramdial and Ruth Van Road and the time of day when they did it. And why they did it. And who did it. Yes, um, Cockburn Pen people, Gully people, York Avenue, Civ Right Guy, you know. Yeah, man, thanks, you know, for keeping me in your prayers and keeping me abreast. And I appreciate every one of you around here who still believe in me and know the kind of police officer I was when I was at Huntsbury. Yeah man, thanks again. So, we'll be coming with part two shortly. So, sign up, brace yourself. The Jamaica Young Police Channel, out.